Graham Vincent, violin maker and musician. I bought myself an old lathe and I think old is absolutely the right word for it. Uh, it's a bit older and uh, in a bit worse state than I thought it was when I bought it to be honest. Um, had I realised I probably wouldn't have bought it but I have bought it so I'm making the most of it. So I've dismantled it partly already. It's an old Centrix lathe and it's got a really old split phase split circuit induction motor on it which has got wiring coming out of it which suggests that it hasn't got an automatic switch to uh, change between the two windings so I, I'm not really confident to actually use that one so a friend of mine uh, Chris King who I've mentioned before gave me a while back a motor from a, a deceased pressure washer um, but the motor is perfect and um, he uh, he sort of said, you know, have this. So um, what I've done is I've managed to adapt the um, ends to accept the little pulley that goes with this. Um, so I've got a, a decent motor for it. Um, hopefully we've got enough, enough adjustment on the speeds with the various pulleys to, to bring it into a sensible range. And um, yeah, so I'm going to use that motor. I'm going to rig up a, um, a sort of a bed for the motor to sit on. Uh, which is hinged so that the weight of the motor actually pulls down and puts the pulley under tension. I probably ought to have some sort of sliding motor mount so that um, I can change uh, change the gearing relatively easily. Um, I'll have to work out how I'm going to do that. I mean, it was in just in a right old state on a number of fronts. Um, there's there's sort of end float bearings which need sorting out. Yeah, to be honest, the, the bronze bushings in the plain bearings look a little bit knackered, so at some stage I'm sure they're going to have to be replaced as well. But anyway, I'm going to screw it to a great big hunk of wood that I've had lying around here for ages, sort of wondering what to do with, and it's just about the right length. It's a little bit short, but there we go. It's, it's what I've got, so that's what I'm going to be using. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm hoping to be able to make violin pegs on it because uh, I, I want to make all my own violin pegs. I, I don't want to be buying in stuff. I want to make them from English hardwoods and uh, or, or at the very least stuff that's really sustainable, like, um, you know, like like sort of um, North American hard maple, you know, rock maple uh, or something like that. Boxwood is something I really want to ha have a go at, English boxwood. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's, I'm, I'm drifting off topic here a little bit. The other thing I want to try is making uh, a couple of whistles on it. It's something I really want to have a go at because I, um, after my operation in February this year, I decided it would be really good to uh, put the brain to some fresh exercise. And so I've started to learn the, the penny whistle. And it's going fairly well. And uh, as I do, I got a bit carried away and I... I've ordered a handmade whistle from Western Whistles. I can, I just know if I've got a lathe and I've got some wood and uh, I'm, I'm kind of thinking I will probably make myself a low D whistle in wood, which would be um, a nice thing to do. Really, uh, if I can do it, I'm probably, I'm probably going to do it in something like, um, again, rock maple, but then stain it black. Um, and use sort of brass fittings on it. So it could could look quite good if I get it right. In this. It's got a number one Morse taper in there. And also, there's a number one Morse taper there. Now you see why I'm only allowed to play it in the workshop. But anyway, I'll probably paint yourself a, a whistle at some stage. I think it's a good idea.
got to decide what sort of finish I'm going to do on this. I don't know whether I'm going to repaint it or not, or whether I'm just going to go for the oily rag finish. It's aluminium, so it's not going to rust or anything. I think I'm going to go oily rag. There's the old motor. Good grief. I don't know how many RPM it does. Uh, it's just going to be, just going to be guesstimation with the gearing. Give it a temporary uh No wonder the bloke didn't haggle. I think he probably would have taken 15 quid if I'd offered it. But anyway, I paid 40. Um, the motor I had already, free from a friend. Uh, the bit of wood I've had already. So it owes me 40 quid at the moment. Um, it might be quite amusing to keep a tally of how much I spend on it. I've got a horrible feeling <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna end up that I could have bought myself an absolutely fantastic, virtually new, all singing, all dancing uh, lathe for what I'm going to end up spending, I'm sure, but there we go. Such is life. I know one thing I am going to have to buy is a pulley belt. So I'll probably put the pulley back in so I can decide where the, where the motor is going to go. This has got a number one Morse taper, so I, I'm going to buy a little chuck that sits in there as well on the taper for doing things like violin pegs. Um, I guess I'm going to need, I might need a chuck to go in this end um, for when I'm doing uh, boring long holes in things for uh, if I'm going to make any whistles, but oh, I don't know, let's see. So the motor's going to have to live somewhere like that. On so I'm a hinged board. So far this year, crew of external relations.
Okay, so it's a bit rough and ready, but this is my idea for the drive side of it. As you can see, I've mounted the, the motor using uh, plywood and uh, some old hinges onto a bed. This plate is screwed back against some decent sized bits of timber with a square cut on the end so that we know this is square to that. It's all attached together nicely. The belt will go around the pulley like that. So I've just tied a piece of string around here to get a rough idea um, so that when I cut this piece of string in a minute and just measure the overall length, I'll, I'll know roughly what sort of belt I'm looking for. And this works, I think it, it's far enough down so it's putting a good pressure on this. There's enough for me to move to a smaller pulley on here. Uh, I think it's gonna, gonna work well. I've gotta make a, um, a guard to go over here and at least some of the way back there. Not quite sure how I'm gonna mount that. I want it to look neat. I mean, the easiest thing would just be to have something coming up here and over there. But that's a little bit naff, isn't it? We'll see. We'll see what I come up with. The next thing is to order the belt, do that guard, decide what bits and pieces I need to order there um, in terms of a chuck, in terms of Morse tapers, and then, um, it's to decide what switch gear I'm going to have here because I want a sort of I want an emergency switch on the front. Then it's something in here to stop these snapping around. So I, I suspect I'm going to have to make up several washers to go there, and the same here. Um, this is held on by a grub screw, which sits in a slot in the actual shaft. Um, and then it's a question of fashioning a nice lubrication system, lubricating the whole thing up. And then one of the most difficult jobs of all, finding a space in the workshop for it. <laughs> I'm thinking I'll probably put it, um, this one is used only irregularly. That's used all the time. I think the bandsaw I might put uh, somewhere else in the workshop, somewhere nearer to the action, so to speak. And I, and I might put the, the lathe probably here. I haven't decided yet. It's getting there. I'm quite tempted just to try starting it with a bit of string on it instead of a belt. No, that'd be silly. So I've just cut the piece of string, measuring the piece of string now. I'll then go online probably, or may even phone up my local hardware shop in Yeovil and see if they do a V-belt the right size. So what is that size? 830 millimetres. I wonder what the nearest normal standard size is. move that whole board along a little bit. Well, this looks hopeful. Yes, it's the right size. Jolly good. Yeah, look at that. Now we're talking. Lovely. Mm -hmm.
The lathe is, I think, in probably what's going to be the position where I'm going to use it. I've moved a couple of things around. I've put the, uh, the bandsaw at the far end of the workshop next to my main workbench. Um, so what I'm doing at the moment is I am just setting up the switch, uh, which is going to be there. I'm still not entirely convinced that this whole motor thing is going to work. If it doesn't, if the gearing is too high, rather than mucking around to try and make this one work, I'll keep this motor for something else, because it's quite a powerful motor. The, the old one that came with this, uh, I just, my mate Chris King is having a look at that at the moment to see if it can be made to work. Um, so we might even end up putting that one on here. I'm going to get the, the wiring done now, and then I am going to uh, just fasten these in place and lubricate it up and just start it. Uh, I think that's the next stage and see where we are. Got to make sure that the um, earth stays connected. <laughs> so far, I haven't dropped. Let's take the pulley off first of all. spraying everywhere. I think I've got enough oil in there. So very simple on off there. It's got another off switch there. This is on the slowest speed. That's not good, is it? So the state of play, a couple of little problems. The, the end float here, which we knew about already, needs to be dealt with. It needs guarding, obviously. I'm not entirely sure about the motor, whether I've got the right motor here or whether I need to keep thinking on that one. Okay, so in summary, at the end of this first part, we have a lathe, which isn't yet working. Um, have I bought a lemon? I'm starting to think I probably have. Uh, yes, yeah, so let me, I, I said I'd keep a tally of how things have gone, so here we are. The lathe itself uh, was 40 pounds, and then um, I've ordered some centers, uh, which haven't yet arrived, they were 19 quid. Um, the two little oilers, which, um, I've just got was seven pounds. The chuck, which I've had a good look at, is fine as is its Morse taper. It's actually the Morse taper um, within the uh, within the lathe. 
that's got a problem so that may or may not be able to be solved uh, the electric switch was £8.50 and the V-belt was £5.30. So that comes to a grand total of um, £102.30p so far for a lathe that isn't yet working. So <laughs> I think I probably could have um, bought more wisely. But there we go, you live and learn, don't you? But I do kind of feel I've got to see it through to completion now. Um, hopefully it won't be too many more pounds spent, but we'll see.